Uh, well, today we're down at Narai Art Gallery on Soy 5 off of Pratimlak Hill, and we're here to check out a new exhibition from a Canadian artist and gentleman called Jim Ulrich. Let's go in and find out what all this song and dance is about. <laughs> Okay, I'm now with the man who's behind this fantastic exhibition. His name is Jim Ulrich. And the exhibition's called Flyover, A Sense of Place. What does that mean? Jim, tell us about it. Well, Paul, what I'm really looking at here is an exhibition that has to do with a lot of references I've made for my travels around the world, really, or a lot of places. Uh, I take a lot of photographs. I work from photographic reference, and then I go back to my studio in Canada, and I try to think about all the beautiful things that I've seen. When my flight to start happening. Okay. So what you're seeing is kind of maps, landscape, movement of light, whatever. But they're my interpretations. So they're abstract. They're not, you know, representations of anything. They're feelings, they're emotions, they're expressions of my own beliefs as an artist of making art. Well, this is it, of course. I mean, art is meant to be an expression of something that's inside you that, right. you, that you're trying you're trying to get out. I mean, you were telling me before we went on camera that a lot of these have been uh, things that you've taken. That's been you've taken aerial photographs yes. and then tried to not, not necessarily represent them in art but to there's, there's some assimilation between the two is that right that's very true yes and I think also as a as an abstract painter you're looking for form color texture all of those things that make a painting well, we can't stand with this beautiful painting <laughs> behind us, we, we can't stand in front of it without mentioning color you're you're a man who's not afraid of color not a bit I love it yeah. and I entice it in my work I, I I court it in my work, so I'm looking for new materials that help me express what I want to do. I'm not afraid to look at modern art, or, mo or excuse me, modern materials yes. in the thing, you know, industrial materials, if, I, if you will. Okay, so the materials that you used in this painting, for instance, are Cosmetics. Cosmes cosmetics. Cosmetic pigments are mixed with acrylic mediums, and there's so many things today. Okay. I mean, if you look at the industrial paints that are available, uh, there's a whole range of art materials, but I, I build around it. I did my master's degree in Los Angeles a number of years ago, the land of surfboards and hot rods and color. I mean, that's what it's about. So I found that there was a tremendously rich area there, a rich place to work from. And moving it into my own studio, sometimes I'm a little bit off the mainstream because I work with things that a lot of people else, a lot of other people are not interested in. Okay. You mean the subject matter or the material? No, the material and the subject matter too. So, I mean, I've been at this a long time. 40 years I've been painting. Well, it's interesting that you're using, you know, the likes of uh, industrial ma materials and paints mm -hmm. to do something like this because you would always think that a painter would use the, only the best paints, but that's not necessarily but the case. The industrial it? paints can be the best. Ah, okay. okay? Here's the uh, it's, not a, it's not commercial paint. That's only a kind of common denominator. What if you go beyond that? All right. Okay. And create your own materials, now, and that's what I do. This painting here, I mean, this, yes. it's so tactile, it's got these sort of scores and gouges and ripples, but mm. you, you don't cut the canvas or no, no. gouge no. into the paint. No. How, I, just, I mean, I don't want you to dumb down your art, but Not a bit. You know, just to give us an idea of the process. Okay, let's say that you start with a clean slate, a tabula rosa, a piece of canvas. You could wet it, fold it, manipulate it, pour Pour color on, let it dry, build up in layers and layers and layers. Sometimes you're not happy, you paint it out, you get a sander, you grind it off, you get a hair dryer and you, you force images out of it. Uh, heat guns, whatever, tools, spray guns, airbrushes. This sounds like a lot of fun. Well, it's. It, I have a ball. Is this is this a way of? I mean, almost it's a release from was, the well, Canadian that, winters. That's that's what I was going to say. It sounds it's almost my studio. You got to do something. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, it's like Scotland. You've got these long winters. You're right. So so it's it is. It's almost like a release. It's a way of you. I mean, I, I can, the, I can almost imagine you're fighting. You're pushing the boundaries. Oh. I mean, yeah, you could take hair on a stick, you know, a regular paintbrush and tubes, but why not go beyond that? Okay. I mean, who else is, or in my world, this is something that's quite unique. 
in the painting world and it's I'm, unique to me and so that becomes an important thing. I, I think originality, one-off is important. Sure. I mean, yes, there are common things we all share, the history of art, the history, you know, 35 years of teaching on a college level with many students around the world, there are certain things that you look at, but in your own practice, it's private, it's personal. And what you see is what you get. <laughs> now the creative process is one that it's personal. It's always fascinating me. I, I write music, and I know that from writing music, you almost you almost have to learn how not to write it to yes. learn how to write yes. it. Yes, yeah. I think so. Or you get it to a flow. Sometimes you try and try and try and it doesn't work, but sometimes you don't try and it happens. Okay. So you set up the conditions for it to work. And you have to go with this sort of thing. If it starts to work, then you don't quit at 9 o'clock at night. Maybe at 2 you're still working because, holy, this thing is, you know, is really happening. As a musician would know, you, you know, well, no, you court that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, it, it is interesting, the whole sort of creative process. And, think, and it works in many fields. It's, sure. not, it's not only in art, but it's in every aspect of life, the creative aspects. How do you deal with your life and what do you do with it? Well, that's it. But then, so, so today you've got 23 pictures here, yes? I do, yes. yes. Uh, many of which have already been sold and, and the exhibition and is just thanks open. to this wonderful audience and the, and the group that came. It's wonderful tonight, yes. Sure. Well, it's very well attended, uh, and there's lots of people who obviously are absolutely loving what you're doing. I mean, it's uh, it's quite unusual to see this amount of color and these. I mean, this is a huge canvas. It is. Yes. It's. I mean, beautiful, beautiful stuff. You must be very proud. I am very happy. Yeah. And proud. And the exhibition's <laughs> going to run for about uh, two approximately months. Approximately two months. I understand it'll be into December. Okay. At, uh, the, in Patia. Sure, well, I'm sure they're all going to be sold out by the end of two I months. I hope so. I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> well, it is. It is, isn't it? You've got to keep the coffers coming in. Uh, you said that you've been uh, work, working as an artist now for 35 years. Two questions. Well, for about you. 40, but I mean, uh, who's arguing? <laughs> Um, two questions. How you, you mentioned like the materials that they're using nowadays. I mean, mm -hmm. that, I guess that differs vastly from what it, it was. It doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. Uh, I did my master's degree in Los Angeles in the 70s. One of my profs uh, had actually studied in Mexico uh, with the Mexican muralists. Now they were the first people to really look at acrylic paints and the new materials. Why? Because they were doing these huge murals outside in a very hot, polluted environment and they wanted them to last. Right. So fresco breaks down, but these new materials breathe, they have something. So in a lot of ways the Mexican muralists were the first experimenters. Sequeiros, Rivera, did all kinds of research with you know automobile lacquers, all of this stuff. And this prof that I had had actually associated with them. Okay. So he brought a lot of ideas to the studio. Don't just sit there. Try new things. Experiment. Find new things to work with. I mean, you don't go down to the local auto shop and buy a can of paint. But you can, you can research the chemistry of it and what it can do. So that's that's the core of it. Okay. Well, and the other question on the back of that is is how is how has your work changed? Has it always been this kind of medium that you've watched? I think it's changing more and more as I get older. Oddly enough, with more color. I think in a lot of ways I, you become very insular and look at a, almost a monochromatic world. But within the painting you see four or five values or shades or whatever, and that sort of gives you satisfaction. But now I feel free. I can I can push any color I want, and I don't I I do care, but I I'm I'm open. I'm freer. I'm freer now than I was 20 years ago. Really? Yes, very much so. So that just comes with experience. It, no, maturity. it comes from old age and not caring. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> There's not much time left. Go for it. <laughs> well. There is plenty of time left because the exhibition is going to run for uh, no, just about two months, as Jim was saying. Uh, if you are interested in uh, buying these paintings, you're going to have to come along here quick. But by all means, come along to Narai Art Gallery here on Soy 5, just off of Pratimnak, and check out this wonderful work. And also the wonderful bronzeware, which would just be wrong if I didn't mention it. And actually, I'm going to try and catch up with uh, the owner of Narai Gallery, one of the part owners of Narai Gallery, uh, Paul McGarry, in a moment. 
moment uh, if I can prize him away from his red wine. Jim, in the meantime, I wish you every success. I hope this is a sellout for you, a sellout tour if you like, and uh, and that we'll see you back in Thailand in the very near future. In the meantime, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, Cheers. I appreciate it. Thank you.